Welcome back to Back to History. In today's video, we will be looking at all of Queen Victoria's legitimate cousins, starting with those through paternal side. Princess Charlotte of Wales was the only child of future King George IV and his wife, Caroline of Brunswick. She was born in 1796 and for her whole life, she was the only legitimate grandchild of King George III. It was set for her to marry William, Prince of Orange, but after a failed engagement, she fell in love with her later husband, Prince Leopold. Unfortunately, after one and a half years of happy marriage, Charlotte died after giving birth to a stillborn son. Her death left the kingdom in huge mourning and resulted in the succession crisis. If you want to learn more about Charlotte, you can check out my video about her life. It is linked in the description box. As a result of the succession crisis, the sons of George III dropped their mistresses and married to produce an heir. Their third son, later William IV, and his wife Adelaide had two daughters. First, Princess Charlotte of Clarence, who was born in 1819 and only lived for a couple of hours. After a stillbirth, the couple next had another daughter in December 1820. Princess Elizabeth of Clarence was born six weeks premature. She was christened the same day. Unfortunately, she died after only three months on March 4, 1821, and was buried at Windsor Castle. During her short life, she was ahead of future Queen Victoria in the line of succession. William and Adelaide went on to have another stillborn child. Next, we have the only child of George III's fifth son, future King George V of Hanover. He was the son of Ernest August of Hanover and Frederica of mecklenburg strelitz and was born only three days after Victoria on May 27, 1819 in Berlin. His father hoped that he would one day marry the future Queen Victoria and thus keep the British and Hanoverian throne together. But since we know how history went, this marriage never happened. The thrones of Britain and Hanover were split when Queen Victoria ascended the throne in 1837 due to Hanover's Sami Salik law which prevented women from inheriting the throne. His father thus became King of Hanover and George became the next crown prince. He still remained a member of the British royal family since he was a legitimate descendant of George III and remained second in line to the British throne until the birth of Queen Victoria's first child, also named Victoria, in 1814. George went on to marry Princess Marie of saxe Oldenburg. Together they had three children. He succeeded to the throne in 1851, although it was debated if he should succeed his father since he was completely blind. He lost the throne during the Austro-Prussian War to his first cousin, Emperor William I. Following this, George and his family fled to Austria. He died in 1878 in Paris and was buried at Windsor Castle. From George III's seventh son and tenth child, we get the last three cousins of Queen Victoria from her paternal side. Prince George, Duke of Cambridge, was the first child of Prince Adolphus and Princess Augusta and was born on March 26, 1819. Like his father, Prince George pursued a career in the military, becoming a colonel first in the Hanoverian army and later in the British army. Just like with Victoria's other cousin, also named George, it was hoped by his parents for him to marry the future queen. George himself was not a big fan of arranged marriages and went on to marry Sarah Fairbrother, although the marriage was never recognized since it was against the Royal Marriages Act of 1772. Sarah was thus never granted the title of Duchess. Together they had three sons, two of them were born before their marriage. George died in 1904 after a short illness. His younger sister was Princess Augusta of Wales. She was born in 1822 and married her first cousin, Frederick William of mecklenburg strelitz She became a Grand Duchess of mecklenburg strelitz through her marriage. Together the couple had two sons. Sadly, their firstborn son, who was also named after his father, died only a few hours after his birth. She spent most of her life in Germany, where she died in 1916. She was the longest-lived grandchild of King George III and at the time of her death also the longest-lived British princess. The youngest child of Prince Adolphus and his wife was Mary Adelaide of Cambridge. She was born in 1833 in Hanover, Germany, where she spent her first few years. The family later moved back to the UK where they lived at Kensington Palace. By 30 she was still unmarried which was mostly to blame on herself since she did not want to move abroad for a potential husband. Eventually a match was found for her, Prince Francis of Teck, since he was of a lower rank than Mary and was the result of a morganatic marriage and thus had no right to inherit the throne, he had no reason to stay in his kingdom. The couple was married shortly after his arrival and had four children. Their marriage was described as a happy one. The most well-known child of them was Mary, who would later become Queen Consort of the UK upon her marriage to George V. She never lived to see her daughter as queen as she died in 1897 following an emergency operation. 
These were all legitimate cousins of her father's side, were now going on to those of her mother's side. Queen Victoria's mother had nine siblings, six of them survived to adulthood. We're starting with the kids of her oldest sibling, Princess Sophie. Princess Sophie had six sons, it is not much known about them, but their names were Hugo, Alphonse, Alfred, Alexander, Leopold, and Arthur. The fourth son, Alexander, became a diplomat and a politician. He acted as Minister of Foreign Affairs and as a Minister President of Austria. He had four children with his wife Alexandrine and died in 1871. The second oldest sibling of Queen Victoria's mother was Princess Antoinette. Through her, Queen Victoria had five more cousins. The oldest of them was Duchess Maria of Württemberg, who became the stepmother of Prince Albert, Victoria's later husband through her marriage to her own uncle Ernest I. She had no children of her own and died in 1860. Her younger brother was Duke Alexander of Württemberg. He was another man who was considered to be a suitable match for Queen Victoria. He visited her at Kensington Palace in 1833. Nevertheless, he went on to marry Princess Marie of Orleans, the daughter of the last French king. The couple had one child. Sadly, Marie died in 1839 after only two years of marriage. Alexander died over 40 years later in 1881. The other cousins either died in childhood or there is not much known about their life. Next we have the sons of Ernest I, Ernest II and Albert who would later become Queen Victoria's husband. Ernest II succeeded his father as Duke of saxe coburg and Gotha. He supported the Germans in the War of Schleswig-Holstein against Denmark sending thousands of troops to the front. He was also discussed as a possible candidate for the Greek throne after King Otto got deposed. This never happened since he did not want to give up his duchy to leave for Greece. Ernest married Princess Alexandrine of Baden. The couple remained childless. During his whole life he enjoyed a close relationship with his brother Albert until Albert's death in 1861. After Albert's death, Ernest published anonymous pamphlets against the royal family. Nevertheless, he accepted Albert's second son, Prince Alfred, as his successor since he had no kids of his own. Like you already heard, Ernest's younger brother was Prince Albert, who also happened to be Victoria's husband. He was born in August 1819 and grew up in Germany. His mother died at the age of only 30 after being exiled from court for the last seven years. First thoughts of a marriage between Albert and Victoria are documented in 1821. By 1836, their uncle Leopold was also fond of a marriage between his nephew and niece and arranged the first meeting for them. Victoria was amazed by her potential husband and proposed to him in October 1839 when she was already on the throne. They married the following year and had nine children together. Albert's health started declining in 1859 and in December 1861 he died, leaving Victoria in mourning for the rest of her life. Prince Ferdinand was the youngest brother of Queen Victoria's mother. He and his wife had four children. The oldest of them was Ferdinand, who would become King of Portugal as Fernando II, as the husband of Queen Maria II of Portugal. Although Maria was the one who reigned by her right, the couple formed an effective team over the years. His reign ended with the death of Maria during the birth of their 11th child. He then acted as regent for their eldest son, the later Pedro V. Later in life, he would eventually go on and marry an actress. He died in 1885. Next we have his younger brother, Prince August, who became a general major in the Royal Saxon Army. He married Princess Clementine, who was the daughter of the last French king in 1843. Together they had five children and lived in Vienna. Their younger sister was Princess Victoria, who was born on Valentine's Day, 1822. Like her brother, she also married the son of the last French king. The couple had four children together. She died two weeks after giving birth to their youngest daughter. Her husband lived until 1896. Prince Leopold was the youngest son of Prince Ferdinand and his wife and was born in 1824. He entered the Austrian army and was once considered a suitable husband for Isabel II of Spain, but this never happened and he went on to marry a commoner with whom he had one son. He died in 1884. From Queen Victoria's youngest maternal uncle we get her last four cousins. Her uncle Leopold was first married to her cousin Charles of Wales who died after delivering a stillborn son. Leopold remained unmarried until 1832 when he also married a daughter of the King of France. Together they have four children. The oldest of them was Louis Philippe who died after living for only nine months. Next we get Leopold II who would eventually succeed his father to the throne. He reigned for exactly 44 years and is the longest reigned Belgian monarch. He married a cousin of Emperor Franz Joseph, Marie Henriette. 
They had four children together, but after the death of their only son, the marriage became unhappy and they ended up separating. He began an affair with 16-year-old Caroline Lacroix when he was 65. They even married shortly before his death and most likely had two sons together. His younger brother was Prince Philippe. He was born in 1837 and married Marie-Louise, Princess of Hohenzollern. The couple had five kids together. He was offered the crowns of Romania and Greece but refused both. The youngest sister was Marie Charlotte who would later become known as Empress Carlotta of Mexico. She was named after her father's first wife, Princess Charlotte, and was married to the younger brother of Emperor Franz Joseph, Maximilian, whom she married in 1857. It was love at first sight for her. It happened to come that Maximilian was offered the throne of Mexico in 1864. Maximilian was killed in 1868 by Mexican Republic forces and left Charlotte a widow. The couple never had any kids of their own, but they adopted two sons. She lived in Belgium for the rest of her life and died in 1927 after struggling with mental illnesses throughout her life. These were all of Queen Victoria's legitimate cousins. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments down below and I would be happy if you'd subscribe to my channel for more videos. See you next week at Back to History.